Now we want to update the UI and make this a little bit more useful. At the moment, we want to focus on the activity underscore main.xml file. If you don't see that file, you can go to app and then from the res folder in layout and choose activity main. Notice down here, it shows there's a text tab and then a design tab. If you select the design tab, then it switches views and you can see a visual representation. Let's go ahead and make some more space for us. So go ahead and toggle the project window and we have a lot more room. All right, over here you have two different views. And if you come to this where it says select design surface, you can choose from a variety of things. Right now it says design and blueprint. We just want to see the blueprint layout. Over here on the bottom left is the component tree. This shows you a visual hierarchy of all the elements that are on the screen. We have a constraint layout, which is the root element that allows you to add things. As you add them to this particular screen, you will be able to add what they call constraints. And a constraint is something that maintains a relationship between elements on the screen so that regardless of the size of the device, it will fit relative to each other. At the moment, this is centered vertically and horizontally. And if you were to run this on your tablet, it would show up centered. If you ran it on your phone, it would show up centered. So this is the, the uh, advantage of using constraint layout. Well, let's change things a little bit. First, make sure um, that we have turned on, where it says turn on auto connect, we want that off. So right now it is turned off because it's showing that indicator. And the other thing we want to do is change the default margins to 16. All right, over here on the component tree, let's select the text view and press delete. We're going to remove that. Now we want to add a text input and it's referred to as a plain text. So if you click and drag and then notice how you've got some uh, margins that snap to it. So you want to put it in the upper left and let go. Now you can go in and add a button. So I'll click and drag the button and add it right there. At the moment, we don't have any constraints. And so to add a constraint, you can select the text and you can click and drag and release. And notice how it has an indicator that this is now 16 dp away from the top. And if I click and drag, I've now made another connection that is 16 from the left. Well, the button, we want to have a relationship a constraint between the button and the text field and we click and drag here. Whoops, click and drag and let go and now we have a constraint there. If you can't see it very clearly, you can zoom in. So notice that we have a margin of 16 dp between the button and the text. The last thing we want to do is align the uh, what we call the baseline, which represents where the text sits within the button as well as within the input field. If you hover over the button, this little, it says edit baseline. If you click that, now you can see this baseline. If I click and drag, I can, I can make a constraint between that. Come on. There we go. I can make a constraint between the baseline. So that means these are going to align horizontally and they will look proper next to each other. Okay, very good. The next thing we want to do is edit the text so that we have text showing for the edit text as well as the button. If you go back to design view, you'll see this. So here we have some text here and a button text. We want to change that. So first we want to create some string resources. And in order to do that, let's open the project again. 
And let's go down in the res folder in values, we have a strings.xml. Strings.xml represents all of the string values that we'll use throughout the app. The reason we do this is instead of having static text entered in the XML file here, for example, if I go over here and I look at text, you'll notice how there's some static text and, and it even gives you a little warning. It says hard coded string button should use a string resource. It's trying to prompt you to say, hey, you should change this so that it's not static. The reason is a number of reasons. One, if you have everything in your strings XML file, you can easily update the text and also create translations so that if you're creating an app that's going to be uh, supporting multiple languages, you just create multiple string resource files and depending on the language, it will load the appropriate file. The other advantage is that you won't have to search through your code to try to find these references for string. And, and if you're trying to change one little thing, say the, the name of the app or some other item has changed, you don't want to be searching through your code, especially as apps get more complex. All right, so here with the strings.xml file open, we want to open the editor. And here we can then click plus and we want to add a key. Now the key is the reference you use in code to reference the value. And then the default value is what it renders or what it displays. So for our edit text, what we want is to have one that says called edit underscore message is the key. And the default value is going to be enter a message Then click OK. Let's add another key. And this one's going to be for the button and we're going to call it button underscore send. And the default value is going to be send. Let me go ahead and click OK. Now we have these strings. If we close out of the editor, Notice in the strings.xml, we've added these additional. And again, notice that the name here represents the key that we reference in code. And then this in here in the, between these values represent the actual text that shows up. Let's go back to activity main. And let's go back to design view. And here we can select the text and notice over here on the right, there's a couple of options. One says text, we're going to delete that where it says name. We don't want to pre fill the text, but instead we want a hint. And a hint is shows up um, fainter than the enter text. So let's select here. Notice it says choose pick a resource. So select that. Now we want to choose the edit message and then click OK. Notice that it shows up fainter and there's our hint text. Select the button and we're going to change this instead of hard coded as button, let's delete that. And then we're going to pick a resource and button send. Go ahead and select OK. All right, so there you have it. There is the UI for what we're going to do. Now, at the moment, if you were to run this, so let's go ahead and run it and see how it goes. And let's select our emulator. I'm going to proceed without instant run. Here's the emulator and there's the app. At the moment you click send, it doesn't do anything. I can enter text and I can say hello and I can click, but it doesn't do anything. So let's fix that. All right, let's go back. Let's stop the process. Let's go to the main activity.java class file. We can close the strings. We're done with that. Let's go back here. Now we're going to enter a method and we'll talk through what this is. But first, let's go ahead and enter some text.
we'll go with public void send message and then we say view view now when you start typing and you're entering uh, a class reference it says cannot resolve symbol if I click in there and then I press alt enter it's going to prompt and it says we want to import class if you're on a Mac you're going to press option enter but once we do that it's going to import the class now come up here and notice this is folded down if I click to open it we've added this view so here's a reference to the view class and this allows us to now interact with this object okay so we have this method now go back to activity main.xml select the button and over here where it says on click let's go ahead and select that and now we're going to select send message what we've done is the button has some properties and it has an on click uh, that will send we can call a function or method on our code and so what we're saying is when we get a on click event call this send message if you go back to your text you can see here on the button and then it says on click and it's calling the method send message well send message is right here all right the next thing we want to do is what we call building an intent first we need to set up a variable that allows us to pass a message from one activity to another and I'm just going to add a couple of spaces and we're going to call this public static final string and it's going to be called extra message now we're going to give this a key value that is unique and in order for it to be unique the best thing to do is to reference your uh, package name to make it unique so in this case I would say com dot example dot print dot my application we know then that this will be unique within the application and the reason you want it unique is if you are passing messages to another app we don't want the app we don't want to send something that another app might be listening for we are listening for this and it's a unique key no other app is going to reference this key all right then we're going to call this message all right now in our send message we want to create the intent and we start by typing intent and notice you have a lot of autocomplete with Android Studio and it's very helpful so if I go ahead and I press tab it auto completes and it imports the class name for me so now I can keep going and I'm going to call this intent and we're going to say it is equal to new intent and we're going to pass in this for the context which represents this activity class and then we're going to call a class that we haven't written yet but just bear with me just call this display message activity dot class and then semicolon and then the next line now this is going to be red and it's going to stay red until we fix it <laughs> and we'll fix it here in a second so the next thing we want to do is reference the edit text so we're going to say edit text and notice I press tab and it brought in the class reference for me we're going to say edit text and it it also gives you it gives you hints for potential variable names so you go ahead and press tab and accept that hint as well equals and then we want to cast this to edit text and we say find view and this is a very common method you're going to call this method a lot and what we're doing we say find view by id and then we say r.id.edit text and it happens to be edit text number two 
because I had worked on this before and that's what it prompted. Yours might just say edit text. Anyway, now we add semicolon. We're done with that line. All right, next we get the message, which we're going to pull from the edit text object that we just got. And we say get text. And then we say to string. All right, and then finally we say intent dot put extra. And we're referencing the key, which is extra message. And then we pass in the message, which is the string. And the last thing we do is we call start activity and we pass in the intent. Okay, let's talk about what have we done? Well, we have a button. The button calls this, met this method and it passes a reference to what called it. View is the kind of the root uh, element of the button object. Everything you see on the screen uh, is a subclass of view. So we say, all right, call this method and here's a reference to who called that, who passed that event. Then I create an intent and an intent is an object that references to call another activity or even another application. You can think of it as an intent is something you intend to do. And so, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm starting an activity. I'm saying, hey, here's what I want. Here's what I intend to do. And it's a way to communicate with Android to say, hey, load this other activity or load this other app. We get a reference to the edit text, which is what is in our activity main. So notice over here we have edit text, and here we have an ID of edit text two. That's the one that happened to be for mine. Yours might be a little different. So that represents this text field. So I am saying, hey, give me whatever was entered in this edit text field. If I go back to my class here, then once I have the the text, which is a string, then I add in my intent, I say put extra, and I say here's the key and here's the value. The key is extra message, which is up here, and it's a unique key, and then message is the string. And then finally, you have to call start activity, which actually does the thing you want it to do. All right, now we need to resolve this issue, display message activity. To resolve that, Let's come over here to app and right click and choose new and then go all the way over here and we want to choose new activity and choose empty activity. Now, guess what we're going to call this? We're going to call this display message activity. We want the layout file already gives us a name. We want it backwards compatible. Everything else remains the same. Go ahead and click finish. All right, what this does is it's created us the display message activity class file and the layout. Let's go to our layout and notice that we have an empty layout. And here we're going to go to, uh, let's just switch to design view so it's easier to see, we can see everything. And let's switch to see the blueprint. Now, what I want to do here is a little different than what we did in the other one is I want to turn on Auto Connect. It has its advantages when you turn on Auto Connect. Now, let's take a text view and I click and drag. And now when I release it, notice it automatically created these constraints for me. And these constraints now represent uh, it centers it and then it puts it 16 dp from the top. While I've got the text view selected, I can go ahead and change up some of the values so that it, if you don't see this, it says text appearance. If you twirl that open, you can now go in here, you can make it bold, you could make the font, the text size, you know, larger. You can do a lot of things to adjust that. All right. Now, one more thing that we want to do 
go back to activity underscore main. Let's go back to the design view. One thing we want to do with the, the way that this is set up, at the moment, this is always going to be 16 from the left and from the top, and the button is always going to be 16 from the left of the text view. Well, if you have a large device, this is not, it's going to be all scrunched up in the top left corner. We want to change that. We want to make this so that it uh, fits horizontally and that it scales the input edit text to fit the available space. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. And let me just switch over to Blueprint. Uh, and the, one of the things we can do is you can select both of these. If I click and I hold shift and I click the next one, now I have both selected. Now if I right click, you get a context menu dealing with constraints. And notice I can say center horizontally. So I click that and it says center horizontally. Now the problem is when I did that, we lost the constraint between the button and the input text. So to fix that, if I select this and then what I want to do is set the margin. So right now this is set to 16, but I want to change this and also set it to 16. Now I want to go over to my edit text. And from here, um, it's we leave the margin set to 16, but notice this here if I it says now it says wrap content. If I click this a second time, it's going to change this to now it says fixed. And I click it one more time, and this is what I want. It says match constraints. What this is telling it is I want this text box to match the constraints based on what I have set up. So I say always this left should always stay 16 from the left, and then the button is always 16 from the right, and then this is always 16 between the button and the text, then that means the width is going to expand to fill it. Now, when you look at it here um, in the design view, you can't really see that because we're dealing with a small thing. But if I were to switch this up and I switch this, say, to like the 5, or if I rotate, um, orientation, and I switch to landscape, notice what happens. When I switch to landscape, the text box stretched. Awesome. All right, let's go back to portrait. Okay, let's go back to where we're at. So we have a display message activity. And let's go back to here. And this should all be working. It's got a complaint. Let's see what the complaint is. Oh, I forgot the uh, semicolon at the end of that. My bad. All right. Now, we have this code that sends an intent. Now we need to go to our display message activity and receive the intent. Inside the onCreate method, and this gets called when the activity loads and it builds everything that is in the activity display XML file, on create gets called. And what we want to do is get a reference to the intent. So I'm going to say intent. And notice if I press tab, it's going to import. And you can always twirl open these imports to see that. And I can say intent equals get intent. Then I want to get the message out of this intent. And so we say string message equals intent.getStringExtra. And the reference is from the key. We need to reference the key. Well, the key we defined in main.activity as extra message, right? So now that's the key we're looking for, and it's going to give us the value. So now we have the text. Next, we want to reference the text view and call it text view equals, and we're going to cast this to text view, and we say find view by ID, and then r.id.text view. 
And then finally, we say text view dot set text and pass it the message. The other thing we want to do, let's run this first. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's run this in the emulator. All right, so we have the message. We're going to type and we're going to say hello, exclamation point. Click send, and there we are. Perfect. Now we want to go back. Now I can use the back button on the device, but what if I wanted to use the back button up here? Well, to do that, let's go back and let's stop the activity. And what we want is to add a relationship to say, hey, the parent, this display message activity is a child of main activity. So we want to define its parent. So to do that, we go to the Android manifest. So I'm in app manifest and I go to the Android manifest. Now here, this is where we reference the display message activity. And there's a property that we call parent activity name. So I just press tab and then of course it's going to be main activity. So there, what I've said is, Hey, my parent is going to be main activity. So now whenever you show display message activity, I want you to show the up button on the, to allow me to go back to my parent because everybody wants to be back with their parents, right? Okay. Let's run it and see how that works. Select okay and choose the emulator. All right. We text message. We say, hi there. YouTube and we click send and it says hi there YouTube and now we have this up button that takes us back. Awesome. Very good. So there it is. There's your first application and we've already built some UI. We've talked about how to do some constraint based layouts and how to work with intents. Be sure to subscribe and look for more videos.